Now the first thing when you're fitting any bathroom is a bit of planning and if possible I like to work from a drawing, a detailed drawing with all the dimensions on it because that way saves any embarrassment when you swing the shower screen around and it hits the basin. But if you're an architect or a bathroom designer, block up your ears at this point because as a plumber I've seen a few drawings which don't quite work out in reality. So what I like to do is transfer all the dimensions from the drawing onto the wall, measure them up so there's no mistake and we can verify that everything is as it should be. And the other thing that I really like to do these days, I first came across these on the continent and I just think they're such a good system. Manifolds as opposed to doing those T connections. And these are configurable. You can flip the plates over, you can go for hot and cold, you can put them for bath, shower, whatever you like, and fit them on the wall here and then you've got individual control of every circuit and what could be better than that that's just hidden underneath the shelf and it's there whenever you want it the other thing is of course you can put all the carcassing in isolate the system and then carry on with your second fix Now, as we all know, there are one or two of these systems around different makes, but the thing that I really like about this one from Ambercus is that they are a British company, they understand British plumbing, and they've actually designed this to work with our systems. Everything you need to do the job is in this kit. So that includes having a straight and an angled waist outfit. You won't need the two of them, obviously, but whichever one you want is there. So as I put this together, you'll see a lot of unique features that I think makes it the best one out there. So I know quite a number of plumbers who see an instruction booklet and then throw it away. That's crazy because there's quite a lot of good information in here. And honestly, there's some unique features that you won't want to miss on this system. I'm going to show you them in a video, but the instruction booklet is there to refer to. Now the basis of all these wall hung systems is that you're going to create a pre-wall off the existing bathroom wall and that's going to be used for basically for your soil pipe. Now there was a time when we used to put the loo in and then run the soil pipe along the side and box that in and it just looks awful. I mean things have really moved on. This is neat, it's all hidden. So what we're basing it on is 225 millimeters in this case off the wall to the front of the, the frame and that's going to give us ample room for that soil pipe behind and the thing about the Amicus package system if you like is that they even give you two sizes of bolts so that you can cope with whatever the installation is so this is one of the rare occasions when you don't worry about having a few bits left over in the kit because they're giving you things you won't need just because they're giving you all those variations. Now, I know there are people out there who are gonna be saying, hang on a minute, you mean I'm paying for bits I don't use? That's a bit of a waste, but actually, when you add it up, if you look at the cost of some other frames and then you go buying all the extra bits that you need to complete the installation, it can add up to a lot. This is a competitively priced frame. Even with all these extra bits in it, it really works out to be cost effective. Now, one of the things people worry about is you've got considerable weight onto a frame. I mean, people aren't getting any lighter for a start. So you need to make sure it's really secure. You've got about 65% of the weight going down into the floor. So there's some secure fixings in a floor plate. And then that means you've got 35% that's coming back from the wall. Now, in this case, we're fitting to a stud wall. So what I want to do is use a bit of Unistrut to spread the load across the wall and actually we pick up the basin frame with it as well. Now the thing about the Unistrut is that the Abacus system is made to fit, they've actually got the fixings that will fit directly into the Unistrut so you're not having to build it up and add odd brackets. The first thing we need to do is to fix these plates down onto the floor and they do supply the fixings to do that but I know there's a lot of plumbers who are a bit nervous about going directly down onto chipboard floors. I mean, this is moisture resistant and it's fine, but if you are worried about it, if you think the floor won't take it, you can put a piece of ply through there as a bit of reinforcing. The important thing is that it comes up, here's the mark, this is one meter from the finished floor level. So it may be that putting that ply through, by the time you put your tiles on, it's the right height. But if it's not, 
you've got some adjustment in the feet. But the important thing is not to start raising that frame up too high because that's gonna throw the whole installation out. Keep it at that meter and you'll be fine. Now a really great feature of this frame is that it's got these lovely large feet which means you've got a nice weight distribution there. I've fitted frames where they've got tiny silly little feet and you're trying to get the drill in and make a decent fixing. Honestly it's really difficult. Well this one you can get down behind it and you can make the fixings very easily and of course you've got these rubber pads on the bottom which stop the noise transmission down into the building. So I've got a nice parallel line along the front here at 225, where the front of the wall is gonna be. That's centre. So now I can assemble the brackets for the top of the frame to fix that. Now these are the wall brackets. They've got ABS to stop that noise transmission. And the great thing about this is that you can use them that way if you're going into a unistrut or if you're going into a bit of timber or something like that, you can put them on the side or that way means you can get the drill in. But I would just say that if you do that and you've got a basin frame coming in very close, you may find those two brackets touch each other. So in that case, you would just turn it round. But easy enough, there's no bolt cutting to be done. They simply go in, you've got the two different lengths of bolt to choose from. And we've got a nice little clip that goes in there. We put the bolt through and we wind it in. I'm using the long bolt rather than the short one. It's just on the cusp between the two, but you can see there's plenty of fixing there. And when I'm happy, I put that in to lock us in place. So just another thing they've really thought about here is that whichever way this bracket goes round, it's still level with the top of the frame. So if you're mounting a shelf, you don't have to worry about putting any extra stud work in. You can just run the shelf from there to there and it's supported. Now I'm going to just work out where the unistrut's going to go in place, fix that on the wall and we're ready to go. And how clever is this? This little clip lock nut that holds it in place simply clips on there and turns around to hold it. Now I can just get that groove to line up with where the unistrut's going to go and mark that on the wall. So I'll just show you how this clip fits into the unistrut. There's a nib on the back of the ABS bracket and that sits in that groove. And to lock it in there, we've got a washer that spins around. It's got to be the right way around so that when the nut turns, it tightens that washer on. So do it up hand tight, turn it in, spin it round and then tighten it. When you're using a floor mounted pan, the height is predetermined, you can't change it. But with a wall mounted pan, obviously it can change, it can go up or down. And I've had, let's call them discussions with customers over whether the pan has been at the right height or not. Obviously some people are short, some people are tall, they may want it differently. But the important thing is that you establish all this before you fix the top. Work out what your floor build up is gonna be, whether you've got underfloor heating or whatever in there, and obviously the tile. It also helps to have the pan. Now I know that to the center of the bolt here, I'm looking for 320 millimeters off the finished floor level and that spot on there. So now I know that I can fix the top. If that needed to be altered, it can be altered very easily by these bolts on the side here. You can move it up or down. But the important thing is that you must do that before you fix it finally, because 
when you've got it all tiled and everything else, it's a very difficult thing to put right. So that's pretty solid. I'm really pleased with that. So now I can carry on with my first fix, get my carcassing finished, and I've got the choice of connectors in the kit. These can cost you quite a bit of money if you have to go out and buy them extra, but I'm gonna use the bent connector on this one. So that's the waste water out. To me, that's always the hardest part because it can only ever go downhill. And we're gonna pop these on here to protect the threads while we're doing the tiling. Those bolts can be adjusted in or out afterwards, by the way, to suit the pan. Some people worry about these bolts. They wonder whether this is capable of holding all that weight. Well, it'll hold 400 kilos. And I know people are getting heavier, but they're not that heavy. And then we've got the debris stoppers. They're supplied. They pop in there and then the tile guide which goes at the top clips in there now we're ready to do the supply now when it comes to fitting the supply you've got a choice of either coming in at the back or changing it round to come in at the top and to do that you simply take the plate off and it's great because everything can be accessed through the front and that includes servicing even when it's tiled up you can get to everything so we've got the supply to the fill valve going round on a flexible hose here and that is isolated there now if we want to change this around to go through the top we just take the connection off here and then take the valve out and put it through the top and when you put that back you've got an o-ring to seal it so it doesn't have to have any paste on it or anything like that. The O-ring will do the job. Just make sure that it's turned up, but there's no need to get a large wrench or pair of grips on it. The O-ring is doing the seal. Just make sure that that's tightened up to there and that's absolutely fine. And then I'm ready to connect up, test the system, and then I can begin boarding and tiling. You will notice here that there's two options for putting these studs through, and this is the 180 mil. Most of them are 180 mil pans these days, but you do get some that are 230. So again, it's important to make sure you've got your sanitary wear before you finally commit and start tiling, because afterwards changing that over is not easy. Now let's move on to fixing the basin. So why would you want to use a basin frame for a wall hung basin? Well, Quite honestly, it just makes life easier. You can build up stology and people bolt them to the wall, but actually using this frame makes the job a lot better and you get a better job. It's a lot more secure. It's fully adjustable so that you can change the position for the pipes and the waste and so on. The important thing is to get your basin first so you know what basin you're gonna be fitting to this because obviously different sizes, different shapes, different pedestals they all fit slightly differently. But if you've got your basin on hand, there is nothing complicated about this job. In this case, because we're fitting this next to a WC frame, we're gonna use the same bit of Unistrut to hold it to the wall and it gives it a really secure fixing. But if you didn't wanna put this in a, a wall alongside the WC, if you wanted to put it in a cloakroom or something like that, you didn't have the room, you could move this back as close as 100 millimeters to the wall. So there's plenty of versatility. There's adjustment everywhere on this frame. We can rise and fall on the waist outlet we can adjust the inlet position so that we can accommodate a chrome trap if we want, or a pedestal. So there's lots of adjustment. The important thing is get your basin, get your pedestal so that you know where you're going with it and then you'll be fine. Another thing I really like about this, which is different to a lot of the continental ones, is we've got a good inch and a quarter waste outlet there, which is brilliant. We've got an inch and a quarter into here with the bung, which is great. So everything is made to work with the British plumbing system and you really will find it a lot different if you've used those continental ones, you'll find this is a lot easier. So the good thing is that we've got a nice level fixing. We don't need to put in any more stud work or anything at all. That's ready to put a shelf on the top if a shelf is what you wanna do.
So now I've got that frame securely fixed. There's still actually adjustment here. I know from my finished floor level, which is my elements board plus my tiles plus a bit of adhesive, that I want to achieve 850 to the top of the basin. So I can measure that up and that gives me 795 for the bolts here, the center of the bolts. So all that can be adjusted very easily on the socket set up or down. I know that with this particular basin, I need to adjust out. So that's a 280 adjustment. So I can move that in or out so that I get the correct adjustment centered, of course, on, on there. And I can also, by doing a trial fit, and I would recommend a trial fit at this stage, of just put the basin up, check where your trap is gonna go, where your waist is gonna go, because you've got a rise and fall here, so we can go up or down with that. We can also go in or out, or up or down with our pipe connections there. So we're ready to go. Once we start that tiling, the basin's gonna go on there perfectly, and everything's gonna line up. So once we've established exactly where all those are gonna go, we can start our boarding and our tiling, and we know we haven't gotta make any adjustments afterwards. Okay, so now I've got the frame in position. You can see that everything's adjusted, everything's in place to suit that particular basin. And I've got the bolts in here. The great thing about these bolts is that, unlike somewhere you've got to cut them to length and worry about, with these you can just wind them back and forth so that you've got them at exactly the right length. So that's a really good feature. And then I just pop on a couple of sleeves here, just to stop the tile adhesive, clog in the threads and also protect your eyes. And here we've got some debris stoppers to go in the end so that when we do the boarding and tiling, nothing gets in there. But also, if you put a bit of PTFE tape around these, you'll find that you can use them to test the whole system, to test your carcassing up before you start boarding. So we're absolutely sure that everything behind there is leak free and it's ready to go. And you know, I hear a lot of plumbers moaning about the way plumbing is going these days. They talk about plastic fittings and all the rest of it. And I must admit, I think it did go through a bit of a low spot, you know, for maybe 20 years or so. But I think now there's some real design and innovation coming into plumbing that is helping us. And if I was a young plumber starting out today, I'd be really pleased to be using kit like this. So that's the first fix done. And now we're ready for boarding and tiling. So now let's just look at where we've got to according to our drawing here. We've got the frame in position for the basin all nice and secure. We've got the WC frame in at the correct spacing. We've put a bit of stud work in and the great thing is that you can fix through the side of this frame to make that stud work really rigid, which I really like that. And then as we go along on the drawing, we've put a stud in for the over bath shower screen and then centered on the bath itself, we've got some 400 center stud work there which is going to take our shower and our bath plumbing and you're really going to like this next bit because instead of having to mess around with noggins and bits of plywood we've got a really innovative solution. One thing I've noticed is that shower heads are getting bigger which means they're also getting heavier and it seems to me that shower manufacturers aren't always thinking of the plumber when it comes to mounting those in a way they're leaving them high and dry but there is a really good solution here and that is this purpose-made shower head mounting plate which allows you to mount securely onto stud work and it's adjustable we've set it up for 400 centers here but you can adjust it and it gives you a really secure fixing for that shower head. So rather than having to mess around, try to put bits of plywood in there and make it up yourself, you might as well use one of these because they're really inexpensive items. Now let's face it, plumbers aren't joiners and why should they be? But when it comes to mounting shower valves, you have to go and scrounge a bit of plywood from somewhere or maybe I've even seen people using bits of old pallet to try and make up some kind of secure mounting. There's actually a much better way of doing it and it's this purpose made shower valve mounting plate which is a solid really solid bit of plywood and with fully adjustable to suit the studs between 350 and 400 centers and that gives us a really secure fixing for any manufacturer's valve so obviously you set this for the depth of a shower valve and also for your board and tiles
And to complement this system, we're going to use an over bath spout, and we've got a mounting plate for that too here, which will allow us to either put in a three quarter or we could push that down for a half inch spout. But again, a really great solution. It's there, saves drilling the bath or anything else, and it looks really integrated and neat. Okay, making real good progress. Now I've got the shrouds on, all the debris stoppers in place, all the plumbing's done. So you might notice that I've set this pipe back against the wall here rather than running it directly up. And there's a very good reason for that because what people are looking for nowadays, they're looking for those storage areas inside the shower where they can put their shampoos and things. And we're gonna make use of this service for it. It's absolutely ideal for that. Now, when a lot of people do this, they make it up out of plywood or plasterboard and try and waterproof it not very satisfactory. Here's a much better ready-made solution, which fits directly in, made for the job, and it'll go into that 200 mil void, and then we just bring it flush to the front with the ball. And the great thing is we don't need to worry about breaking that waterproof structure with anything because we can put it in with our adhesive. So I'll just let that set go off a bit, but when I do board up, I'll put the waterproof adhesive all around the edge there to make a perfect seal. That's belt and braces. And of course, you can also put a little LED light in the top here, that looks really good. And then the whole thing will be totally waterproof, ready for tiling, and it will mean that no water will seep down the back there and get into the structure. It's a perfect, ready-made, purpose-made system. Now, in the UK and probably the world over, we never seem to have enough storage space inside bathrooms and shower rooms. And we have got this void here, of course, which we can make use of, which means we don't have to worry about putting a surface mounted cabinet on. So we keep everything neat. And we've got a really clever solution to this. The studs which run up beside either the WC frame or the basin frame can be utilized to fit this preformed module in which can be fixed to the wall at this stage before we do the boarding and then we board up to it and then we've got a little lip there to tile to and that means we've got a ready-made opening but at this stage we don't have to put the cabinet in we can leave that to last knock to all the work's been done and then just slip that bath cabinet in as our last job it's a really professional solution and as a plumber i would be challenged to do this in timber but using this system it's really easy So now we've tested all the pipework, everything is sound, we've tested the waste and everything is in exactly the right place ready for the second fix. But obviously before we do that, we've got to do the boarding. And I always like to board right down to the floor behind the bath. Now what do you board with? There was a time when people boarded with this plasterboard, but every plumber's seen samples of plasterboard, instances where the water has got down through the back even with moisture resistant plasterboard as soon as you put that screw in where's your moisture resistance gone the best thing to use is this elements insulated waterproof board now this has got several advantages one is that it's got great bond strength because this is cement based this surface it's an ideal surface for putting tiles onto and it can actually support 62 kilos per square meter of tiles which is a hell of a lot but it's also insulated, which gives you a better U value, but more importantly, it cuts down on condensation. By warming up the surface area of those tiles, if you like, it means that you don't have that same level of condensation. And of course, condensation is the number one destroyer of bathrooms. It really is a major problem. Cut out the condensation and the bathroom will look better for longer. It's easy to use, it's easy to cut, it's easy to fix, and of course, it's incredibly lightweight. Okay, so that's the last bit of the 
board fixed. You can see that I've used these plate washers here at 300 centers on the studs and they're just recessed in slightly into the surface so that we can tile straight over without any obstructions. And when you come to cutting round here, I know it's tempting to use the angle grinder and put yourself a diamond, but it's much better if you just do a nice neat hole there. And that way you can make sure you've got a good surface to tile onto and you've got plenty of support for that wall hung WC. So I had a good day's first fix, I'm really happy with that and just before I go on to fit the bath I just want to reiterate this point because this is so important, I've seen it so many times where people have had to make alterations after the tile has been in. To avoid this just check everything, if you've got your basin check your centres are right, check that your outlets are right here and that, that if you're using a semi ped that that will go inside the semi ped and then we put our debris stoppers on and we also sleeve over the studs to make sure they can't get filled up with adhesive. Similarly when we come to the loo we've got the pan so we know we've got the centers right for that, we know the heights right, we've got debris stoppers in there again to stop it getting filled up with tile adhesive so everything is ready to go there. Now when we come over to the shower valve it's very important that you set that at the right depth to allow for both the board and for the tiles and a bit of adhesive. Of course you've got a little bit of adjustment there, the plate can move backwards or forwards, so so long as you get that just there, just right, and also when you come to the bath spout and the shower outlet, make sure that you've got those and that you can check for that tile thickness so that you're not ending up in that situation where you're having to make alterations after the tile has done his bit. Now I just want to make a quick point about shower valves and about sealing around them. Obviously when you put the valve in there's a hole there and when you come to cover it you use a sealing plate of some kind over the top of the tiles and often these days that's siliconed on to seal it but obviously that can break down over the years, you can get movement and if you do you can find that water seeping down, you've got that big void there. So what Abacus have done is come up with this neoprene gasket that fits over the valve, this is under the tiling and that's sealed up with Pro Seal before the tiling's done so that if any water seep down behind that cover plate we've got our second barrier to stop any water seeping into the structure itself. That makes an enormous difference because again it's this belt and braces approach that makes sure that at no point in the future are you ever going to get any problem with water ingress. And similarly on the bath spout we've got another neoprene gasket round there and even on the shower head we put one. And now you might think why do you want to put one on a shower head, the water's falling down, but you do get situations where there's a loose joint and the water tracks back along the arm of the shower head down into the structure. So by putting a neoprene gasket on there as well we make sure that we're never going to get any problems from any of those areas. Obviously this is subject to a great deal of water over many years so we want to make absolutely sure it's 100% waterproof. Here's one of my pet subjects, fitting baths. I've been to so many over the years that have been fitted incorrectly and they've moved and allowed water to seep down the back and we all know what that leads to. So it's very important at this stage that we get it fitted properly and solidly. The first thing obviously is that we need to make sure that it's level and not just level along one plane but obviously level along two planes. Now that's important for a number of reasons. One is that the bath is built with this slight falling from the edge into the bath so that any water that collects along the edge will go back into the bath and if you don't get it level what you sometimes find is you get water pooling around the edge of the shower screen and leaking out there so that's essential that you do that and the next thing I do is to make sure that I've got a good solid timber bearer behind that long edge at the back there to stop any movement and if you do that when you come to put your ceiling tape in and your 
silicon seal, you make sure there's no movement there, no stretch on the silicon joint. Then we've got this seal, this no more leak seal that goes all the way around the edge of the bath to give us that belt and braces, that second seal, if you like, around the back edge. So we're gonna make sure that no water can ever leak down the back. Now, when it comes to choosing a bath, you can, of course, fit a standard Abacus acrylic bath. They're all high quality baths, nothing wrong with that. But because this bath is over a shower, people tend to move around in that. And I think that that requires something a little bit more. And I tend to try and persuade the customer to use this Armour Plus bath, which has got a gel coating around the outside. It starts to give you the kind of rigidity that you get in a cast iron bath, but without the weight. And you'll also notice that there's no overflow. Now, the reason for this is that on some jobs, you're required to reduce the capacity of the bath for water saving and so on. So they allow you to fit the overflow, position the overflow where you need it. Now, if you look at this, this is another innovation from Abacus, a template. So you don't have to be Archimedes. You don't have to work out the capacity of the bath. It's already written on there and you just drill the hole according to where you need that capacity to be. Now, just the general point about fitting baths is that I like to fit them on bearers. I know a lot of people don't bother now. They say that the chipboard is now water resistant and you don't really need to worry about the feet dropping through the floor. But I also think that when you fit the bearers, it also means you can shorten the legs slightly. It becomes more rigid and you can also screw the feet directly to the bearers and slide it into position. So that's just my preference. I think it makes for a better job. So what I like to do at this stage is to just tosh screw these bearers to the floor, but of course you could be worried about there being cables or pipes below. And if you're not 100% sure that you're not gonna hit anything, the best thing to do is use a bit of good quality adhesive, stick those bearers down. These days that adhesive is so good that that's plenty good enough. So I'm going to fit the bath to the wall now. In bad old days we used to use brackets, but now I just use this MD adhesive, which is really good. It's waterproof and quite honestly, a nice thin bead along the back. And once you push that on and it goes off, that's going to go nowhere. Now at this stage, what most people would do is to tile down to the edge of the bath and then run a bead of silicon along there to stop any water ingress. And when you're dealing with a shower, you're dealing with a lot of water over a long period of time. And very often it doesn't take long for that joint to break down and for water to start seeping in down the back of the bath. I've seen it so many times. And as this video is all about showing you better ways of doing something, here's a product that will solve that problem once and for all. It's called No More Leaks Kit and it's from Abacus. In the kit, You've got the waterproof tape, you've got two preformed corners, and you've got the Pro Seal for sticking that to the wall to make a flexible waterproof joint, and even a brush for applying it. And this comes with a 15 year guarantee. They're that confident. Now at this point, it's really important that you protect the bath because a tiler drops a tile into the bath, chips it, there can all kinds of mishaps can happen, we all know that. So make sure you protect it. That way, 
when it comes to the end, you're not in for any nasty surprises. So what I do is I tape along the edge with a masking tape, put a sheet of Protec on there, tape that down and leave it there until everything else has been done. So now we've come to the bit where we fit the bath panel. Years ago, I used to fit plastic bath panels. I spent many hours of my life struggling with those things. I'm really glad to see them going out of style. They're dirt traps, and these days people want something a lot clean, a lot more substantial. And the thing to do is to have a tiled bath panel. Now that used to mean that you've got a joiner to make up a bit of plywood, but that's not a great surface to tile onto. In the end, the humidity will move it, the joints will crack, the grout will fall out. So a much better solution is this Abacus Elements bath panel, which is made of exactly the same material as the Elements ball, but thicker. It's got adjustable feet, and it makes the perfect surface for tiling onto. Rather than using a timber batten along the floor, you can actually use this bath panel mounting kit, which is moisture stable. It's a lot easier to fit and cut. So now we're almost ready to do the tiling, but I want to overboard this floor because you don't want to tile onto chipboard or anything like that. Now, a lot of people would just put nine mil ply down, but the problem with doing it with nine mil ply is it's not a great surface for tiling onto. The adhesion's not good, and it tends to follow the undulations in the floor. A better way of doing it is to use this 10 millimeter elements board, and that means that we could just bed that down on this KST adhesive. We can take out any undulations. We could even build it up by 50 millimeters to take a dip out of the floor. And it gives much better adhesion to the tiles. It's stable, it won't lift. And also it's got good insulating properties. So if you're using under tile heating, it's gonna give a much faster warm up to the tiles. The heat's gonna come up rather than going down. So it's a win-win all the way around. So the first thing is to prime the wood floor before you put the adhesive down. Now the adhesive has gone off, it normally takes three or four hours, but it's gone off a bit faster today because it's quite warm, and now I can mechanically fix it. So just like the walls, I'm fixing at 300 millimeter centers or thereabouts, and obviously fixing down the edges and all the corners. So now I've got the floor boarded through, I just want to go around and tape all the joints and especially the ones in the critical areas where we're in the shower, we need to be using this neoprene, totally waterproof, flexible tape. Now people talk about waterproof plasterboard and all those kind of things all very well until you put a hole in it or a joint and then that's a path for the moisture to get through. So this way we make sure that every single area where it would be possible for any moisture to get through if the grout broke down and there was water getting in, we make sure they're all sealed off. For the other areas where we don't need to worry about the sort of critical moisture ingress, we can use this alkali resistant scrim tape, which is a standard sort of scrim tape that you might see in plastering, and we put that over all the other joints. So obviously we don't want to point load this board until it's been tiled over, so I've put a piece of board down for this hop up to take my great weight. So 
So now you can see that the first fix is really complete now and we've got all this area and the wet area around the shower covered with a neoprene tape that's totally waterproof and this area is covered with the scrim and also the floor. So all this investment, all this time that we've spent getting this absolutely right is going to make the second fix an absolute breeze. And the great thing is we haven't got to bring any of that stuff in, none of the sanitary wear, none of the delicate things have got to come into this room until the tile is completely finished. Now I'm not a tiler, I wouldn't pretend to be one, but I've had to do a bit in my time. And one thing I have learned is that setting out is critical. If you set out right from the start, you save yourself a lot of trouble with silly little cuts. And also the whole look of the room is improved if it looks like it was planned that way. So we've centered the tiles on the flush panel here to work both ways from there and also from the top of the bath so hopefully we've avoided any silly little cuts and it should make the job a lot faster and the finished job look a lot better so now it's over to the tiler You know, every time I do a bathroom, it seems to me the tiles are getting bigger. These are the porcelain marble ones from Abacus, a large format tile, but the great thing is they made a quick and easy job of tiling. So now I'm ready to do the second fix, and I'm gonna start over with the bath. We've got the spout, we've got the shower mixer, and we've got the shower head to go in here. So now I'm fitting the basin and the reason that I like using this basin frame as opposed to sticking a bit of wooden stud work up there is because it gives you all the adjustability, gives you a really solid fixing. I mean, if you take, for instance, these basin bolts here, we're not talking about having to cut the bolt off. We can adjust that bolt with the screwdriver in or out to exactly where we want it. So that gives you that adjustability and then even when you get down to the feed pipes, the supply, Abacus give you in the kit a couple of isolating valves. And they're not just any old isolating valve, nice isolating valve, but they've got a ready seal on there. When I first saw this, I didn't quite believe this, but it actually works really well. And then we've got a nut and olive for 10 mil on there. But if we don't want to use the 10 mil, if we want to go on with the 3 8 thread, we've got the 3 8 thread. But if we want to go onto a half inch tail, we've got a bush here which obviously put PTFE round and you can bush up. So you've got isolating valves in there, in the kit. You're not chasing around looking for bits and pieces and that to me is the thing that really makes your day a lot easier. So I've almost finished connecting this basin up. I just want to show you a couple of things about how we finish it underneath. 
we could use a semi pedestal like this and if you use this abacus one it's got these really clever cable tie systems so you hang that onto the basin bolts and you thread the cable tie through there and then you pull them up tight and you can even release it if you need to but you even get a spare cable tie with that but we're not going to use that system here what we're going to do is go to something that's also very popular this is really stylish square trap and it's fully adjustable so we can adjust it for height and if you're going on to a basin frame like this you need the 35 mil end now a lot of people get you an adapter to do this but they've actually swaged this pipe out so that you can go on to 35 mil but if you're not using a basin waste if you want to go into a McAlpine trap or whatever you can go into 32 mil so the 32 mil will go there and depending on which way you're going depends on which end you cut that pipe from so obviously if you're going 32 mil cut that end off if you're going on the other end cut that end off so it's a versatile system it allows you to get onto any basin and of course you've got a nice long length as well which is very important in a lot because sometimes you finish up a little bit short on these chrome pipes which is a nuisance. So this is really all heavy duty brass, even when it comes to this cover plate here. Sometimes there's a chrome pressed tin or whatever, but it's solid brass here. So for me, a really quality bit of kit. So now we come to fitting the wall hung pan. And this is something that worries a lot of older plumbers, my generation if you like, because they worry about them falling off the wall. Well, if I tell you this is tested to 400 kilos, I think that covers most people. And like all Abacus sanitary wear, this is made for them by a leading German brand. So the quality is absolutely guaranteed. You're not gonna get much better than this. But of course, whichever type of pan you're fitting, whatever make, this WC frame will fit it. It's fully adjustable, so you're okay. And of course, they fit in a variety of different ways. This particular one from Abacus has got this innovative side fixing on the bolt, which is really discreet. And it requires you to set the bolt out 35 millimeters from the tiled surface and then wind this on. So the idea is that if we set this 14 millimeters off the tiled surface, wind that in and have that indent on the outside on both bolts. When the grub screw goes in, it's kind of tapered there. And as you tighten up, it pulls that pan really snugly against the wall. It's quite a clever little idea. So a little explanation as to how I cut this soil pipe and this flush pipe. What I like to do is put them both in position, snugly home where they're gonna go. When I've done that, I mark up on the back and that gives me the position of the wall. So with both of those marked, I can then take out the debris stoppers, put the pipe in and mark up where the wall is on the pipe. Now, when I take that mark, and I take the other mark that I've made on the pipe, and the distance between those two marks is the amount I have to cut off the end of the pipe. But with this one, I cut a couple more mil off just to allow me to push that pipe in without it hitting the end stop, because there's an end stop there, and if you push it in too far, if you cut that just a little bit too long, you run the danger of knocking that end stop on and pushing the pipe in too far into the, into the flush pipe. So just a, a little tip, just cut it there, just two or three mil short and you'll be fine. So same idea with the pan connector. 
we put it in, we're not trying to guess, we mark up the position and that way we make sure that we're completely accurate. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to cut these accurately because you don't want any trouble behind the pan, you don't want any leaks and if you do it this way and you're careful about cutting, measuring and cutting, you'll make sure that it is perfect. So the great thing is that as you wind these in, it pulls the pan back against the wall. And some people worry and they're a little bit hesitant to wind that in, but you've got to make sure that's firmly against your tiling. So long as your tiling is perfectly supported behind, and that's about it. I'll tell you what, that's solid. So now we get to fit the flush panel. And in the past, I've had a bit of trouble with this because one of the critical things is getting these rods to the right length so they operate freely. But with these ones, instead of having to cut them, you just simply turn them in, get them to the right length and click and turn. So it's a great system. It saves you cutting and being plastic, they don't rust up. The whole of this can be serviced. We've got the float valve, the flush, and also we've got a little isolating valve here. So everything can be serviced from within this front panel. So there's a choice of different flush panels here. This one I'm gonna be using is a rectangular two button, but there are many others to choose from. So whatever your customer wants, I'm sure there'll be one to suit them. So just one thing about these flushing systems is that they're actually all WRAS approved and they come preset for the six and three litre flush, but you can reduce them if you need to by adjusting it. So now we're getting very close to payday and I've never really seen the point of all those unboxing videos that you get on YouTube but in this case I'm going to show you how to take the box off this because it is important some people get this wrong. Now this is the cabinet and the cabinet's heavy so what we need to do turn it over and remove the box. So this is a Wend recess cabinet. It comes in six different colors. And if you want the door to open the other way, all you've got to do is flip it through 180 degrees. And the great thing is that because it's put into this frame, it means that it's centered absolutely dead center on that WC.
Now I'm going to fit the shelf, it's been cut to size and you can see that it fits on these brackets behind, there's no need for any further support and of course that does give us access to that manifold below when we need it. You know, one of the things that I really like about this bathroom is that it's built for easy serviceability. I've got isolating valves under the basin. I've got the manifold hidden under this shelf so that each component can be isolated very easily. The WC can be serviced entirely from behind that flush panel, which makes it even easier than a close couple WC. And even the seat can be unclipped for easy cleaning. Now, what I have found in the past is that some people overdo it with the silicone on shower screens. They seal up the inside. You should never do that because what happens then is the profile can start filling up with water. So just run a tiny bead of silicone along the outside and you'll be fine. You know, I've been fitting bathrooms for many years, and over that time I've seen lots and lots of changes. But all too often, those changes are cosmetic, they're just skin deep. Even after six months, sometimes I've gone back to a bathroom, I can already see the signs of deterioration where that mold is starting to build up. But with this bathroom, as you can see, because we've built in that build quality all the way along, We've got insulated board in there, which will cut down on that condensation of mold. We've made sure there's never gonna be any leaks down the back of the shower area. We've built in quality at every single stage of the job. And so I can be sure that this bathroom is built to last.